my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about SysOperation Framework in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for FNS. Um, do you have a process that maybe you want to offload to the system? Perhaps the process takes a little bit of time. Um, Sys Operations Framework is a great way to do that. It really replaces the old run-based batch, batch jobs um, that you may have used in Dynamics 2012 or before. Now we kind of use the term batch job to refer to this new Sys Operations Framework. Um, but batch job really just kind of refers to offloading the work to a back-end process to the batch job service um, so that you can continue work as a user. Uh, let's first look at a couple reasons why you might want to use uh, Sys Operations Framework to offload that work. Maybe you've got some records that you've got staged in a table and you need to loop through them and process them. That's very common for integrations. You may stage the data directly in a staging table and then you want to create a sales order or create journals at, based off of that record. A batch job or sys operations framework job is a great way to do that. Another option is perhaps you've got a operation that you're doing regularly, such as invoicing a sales order, um, but you would like to do that on a whole group of sales orders or a much larger number of records. Doing that through a sys operation framework job is an awesome way to do that. And then lastly, another uh, reason to use this kind of job that I think goes uh, very unused it is you may just have a process that takes a few seconds um, but something that you do regularly. Maybe it's just clicking a button on a form and you have to wait those 15 seconds before control is given back to the user. Well, if you use a sys operations job, you can offload that work with a couple clips, clicks to the system and then you can continue on your way. Obviously, you need to make sure that you're not needing the response and results of that batch job to do your next step of work. But if you do have some kind of operation where it's just fire away and you don't care and you'd like to keep moving through, uh, offloading those to this kind of job is, is really great. So let's go over it. This is a very simple um, example. First, we need to create a class um, that is our contract class. So it needs to have this attribute, data contract attribute. And then by uh, convention, it needs to have a suffix with the word contract uh, at the end. And that's it. The point of this class is it's going to take any parameters that you have that you need to send to this operation, to the service class that we'll go over in a second. Maybe you have a from date and a to date and that works as a date range that you're gonna process. Maybe you have some kind of filter, um, whether it be an enum or a status that you need to send to the service class and say only run this process for this, um, this filter. Um, in the very basic sense, you can just leave this class completely blank as you may not have um, that kind of data, that parameter that you need to send it. If you did have parameters, you would set up member variables and par methods in this class. The next thing that we can set up is the service class. So I've already created a service class, um, but otherwise you would create the service class. Again, it's very basic. You just need to uh, name your class with service being the suffix um, per convention it needs to extend the sys operation service base class. This gives us all the functionality um, for this to work. Next, you need to create a public method. You can name the method whatever you want. In my case, I named it process. And then you need to pass it one parameter, which is your contract class. This is the class we just created in the last step. Um, I've called the parameter underscore contract. Um, and then inside of this method, this is where you're going to do your work, whether it's invoicing a sales order or creating a sales order or creating journals or cleaning something up, deleting records, whatever it is that you're doing, this is where you would put that code. Very regularly, you're going to be doing a while wow select and you might be reading from your contract class to say, OK, only uh, look at the records between a particular date range. Lastly, we're going to have a controller class. 
and I've already created that. At the top, there doesn't need to be an attribute, um, but by convention, we're gonna end it with the suffix controller, and it's going to extend sysoperations service controller. This really serves as a uh, class to kind of tie all our pieces together. There's really four main pieces to it that are most common. One, you're gonna have a new method. Inside this new method, you're gonna call the super method, and then you're gonna pass it three different parameters. The first parameter is you need to pass it the name of your service class. And that's the class we just created. Next, you need to pass it the name of the method that you would like to call. So in this case, we've got the method named process on our service class. And then lastly, you can pass it the execute, execution mode. The next method we can look at is a method named default caption. This is overriding the method in the base class, and you can provide it with a string or label um, that's gonna serve as the caption for your sys operations uh, job. Next, we're gonna have a construct method. This should return a, our controller class. It can take as a parameter the execution mode. And then inside this method, we're going to instantiate our controller, set our execution mode, and con return our controller. So pretty boilerplate, you know, if you're copying and pasting, you can just uh, replace the name of the controller class and you're good to go. And then lastly, we're gonna have a main method. Main method is what the menu item's gonna be able to call, and we'll look at that in a second. Here, again, we're going to um, in declare the controller class variable, instantiate it with our construct method, and then call start operation. And start operation is really gonna tell the system to actually run um, our process. And then very lastly, we're gonna create a action menu item. So in this case, I created this action menu item, and there's only kind of three pieces to it. Uh, we're gonna set the label to be whatever we want our label to be for calling our, our process. And then we're gonna set the object type to be class. And the object itself is gonna be the name of our controller class. And that will just call our main method and kick off our whole process. That's really all it is. Uh, Sys operations framework uh, batch jobs can really save you a lot of time and they're really useful and they're very easy to create. Um, there's, we may cover in a later uh, video, more complicated Sys operation framework batch jobs that have the UI components, but for many of your jobs, you won't need any of these parameters and it's really just as basic as these three classes. Thanks so much.